Hey guys, I know there's a lot of information out there about how to manage your finances. And I'll be honest with you, there's not just one way. There are so many different influencers out there that give great advice. I can think of many different people who have given great advice out there. Until you can start looking at what works for you, you really don't know what's going to work for you. And so some of you guys might be doing a lot of research because you're feeling broke. You're still feeling part of this paycheck to paycheck cycle. And if you're watching this, you're probably hoping that you're going to get some great advice and something that will work and click, hopefully. Um, but I'll tell you this. I know that some of my advice doesn't work for everybody. I can tell you that with certainty because I don't know how many times I've sat down with a client and I've been um, in, in the business of financial services serving clients for just about 26 years now. And I can tell you this. Um, no one always agrees with you. Um, when you give advice or no one will always take great advice. Um, and I say great advice because it is great advice. For some people, it's great advice. For some, for, for others, it doesn't work. And so I, I don't want to necessarily give you advice that I think will work for everybody. But if something that I say will work, why not try? Okay. So more recently, I had started to look at my finances a different way. Um, I know a lot of you guys who have been my clients have probably experienced the budget tool. Um, I added a debt reduction budget tool to that and, and then made it one of this big financial budget tool. Um, and I realized that for myself, it's nice to see it's more of a quarterly or even semi-annual tool but there has to be something on almost a weekly basis to help me be accountable to my finances. And what I mean by that is I realized that if I only looked at my finances um, monthly with my budget tool or my financial, uh, my financial uh, debt or with my debt reduction tool, I didn't really pay attention. It was more of a um, documentation exercise than it was a budgeting exercise. Okay. And I've always known this. I've always known that budgeting isn't just writing down what you spend money on. Budgeting is actually writing down what you'd like to spend money on and then following that budget. And I think a lot of people think that budgeting is writing things down. Uh, that is probably the first part of it, but it's not the part that will help you with your financial goals. Okay. So um, the other day, I started to write down everything I spent money on and realized from that second, I, I knew exactly where I overspent my money. And then I start to realize like, this isn't making me feel good. <laughs> I'm not feeling great. I spent way more money than I wanted to. Then you start to feel guilty. And like, who wants to do that? That's why no one wants to do this budget because they feel bad. They feel bad about how much money they've spent, but then they feel overwhelmed because they think they spend way more money um, than they actually need to, but they just don't know where to start. Okay. So what I would encourage you to do is write down all the, the things that you need to buy. And I, when I say need to buy, I mean like your housing costs, okay, like rent or your mortgage, your utilities, you know, um, your even your cell phone bill like those things, and then write down your food, food meaning your groceries, right? The food that you need to buy for your pets, that's important. Um, if you have any kind of health care or insurance that you have to pay out, out of pocket, for instance, um, write that down. And when I say insurance, I mean your life insurance and your critical illness insurance, uh, your disability insurance premiums, those are quite important. So those three things are really the most important, okay? Transportation, that should include uh, car, car loan, car insurance, gas, right? So that's important too because you need your transportation to probably go to work and make a living, right? So I would say those four things. So your housing, 
your transportation, your food, and of course your health care slash insurances. Okay. I would like you to write those four categories down, those four categories, and um, give yourself the amount of money that you would like to allocate to each of those categories. Okay, so for instance, if you know approximately how much your housing costs are and they look like it's gonna be about 50% of your income, then that's what it should be, right? Now, I would probably not just guess 50%, I would try to really calculate it. Um, so if you know like, okay, my mortgage is $1,200, your, your rent is $1,200, whatever, your home insurance is maybe $50 a month, I don't know. Um, your utilities, uh, yeah, they could vary because of course in the wintertime it's, it's a different story. But I mean, if you're in the summertime here, and you have air conditioning, you're using more electricity. So you might not be using, um, you might not be using heat, but you're using electricity, right? So those kind of things. Um, and then try to kind of gauge, well, what do I actually spend on food every week? So if I go to the grocery store every week, I spend probably a hundred dollars every week. Okay. And then just like, just kind of approximate. And then look at your, your, all those mandatory costs, add them up and see how much they stack up against your income. Okay. Now, are you surprised? Are you upside down? Meaning, how am I spending more than I'm making? A lot of you guys might be realizing that right now. So now you're going to start digging, digging a little bit further into your finances. Like, how am I living right now if all of these costs are way more than what I'm bringing in? If that's not the case and you say, hey, I should have like $600 every month. What am I doing with that? That's when you start to realize, okay, I'm basically wasting $600 because I have no idea where it's going to. I really need to take a deeper look. Okay. That's when you start to look at how you can budget your money. Now, if you're finding that I'm spending way more money on my food because you go to Costco every week and it seems to be it's like a $200 bill, okay? And when you have a $200 bill going to Costco every week, I'm guessing you're a family with a two, like with two incomes coming in, okay? Um, I hope you're not spending $200 a week on Costco if it's just you. And the only reason I can even think that, that you would do that is you're stocking up on things that you're probably not using in your pantry. So that, that might be another video altogether. But I would definitely start looking at that because you're spending $200 on food just for yourself. And again, there must be either a medical reason, you might be buying more than a normal person's share of food at Costco, or you're really just spending money you shouldn't have to at Costco. I will tell you this, that was probably the most eye-opening Thing for my budget that I spend way more money on food than I actually have to. Okay. So that's my guilty pleasure. Not that I overeat, but I feel like, oh, I can eat this and, and I'm actually eating the wrong thing. So think about that. Anyway, so let's come back to budgeting. So now that you have this extra flow of money that you have no idea where, where it went, I would encourage you to start budgeting now. Okay. Um, so, so A, Write down all your mandatory costs, right, to live, for you to be able to breathe this air and make a living. Those are your mandatory costs. B, hopefully you have a surplus, okay? So hopefully you have a surplus, but B, relook at all those expenses you spend on the mandatory costs. Are there any way you can cut down? Uh, maybe your next insurance renewal, maybe you should start to look at other rates, Put that in your calendar. When your renewal comes up for your home insurance, go look at other rates and see if you can get it cheaper. Um, gas, I mean, I don't know if you, I don't think anybody really spends too much on gas because there's a there's a limit to how much gas you could put in your tank, but maybe you should take a look at, I don't know, your gas. Um, some of you might disagree with me, but your car, I mean, if you're spending a lot more on your car than your food, 
um, that might be a problem. I don't know, but that's just me. That's not a judgment call. I'm just letting you know. I'm just trying to put it into perspective. Okay. Um, so, so start taking a look at your mandatory costs and see where you can cut corners and then, and then come back to the extra surplus money that I hope you have and start allocating to the things that really matter to you. Okay. Really matter to you. So for instance, if you like to get a massage every month and you know that costs $200, then put that in the budget. Okay. That leaves you with $400 if you have a surplus of 600. Okay. If that's important to you, if it's important to you that you spend, you know, a hundred dollars going out to eat every week. Okay. Every week, guys, if that's important to you and you think that's the only way I can stay sane, I need to go out once a week or I need to buy my Tim Hortons once a day, whatever, like you just add it up and put that as a mandatory cost. But keep in mind, you know, it's cutting into other things, right? Like if you wanted to go on vacation and you had no extra cash, then that's because you should perhaps look at your going out bill. Okay, so start, if you like to buy clothes, well, do you like to buy clothes every month? If you like to buy clothes every month, then set yourself a budget. It's like, okay, I really like to buy clothes, but let me be realistic. If I gave myself a $50 allowance to buy clothes every week, maybe I won't buy it every week, but I'll have like $200 a month, then that, that will give me my guilty pleasure. I don't have to spend it all, but at least I know I have a limit of $200, okay? So those kind of things. I'm not going to chastise you for having these kind of guilty pleasures, if you will. The only thing I'm going to advise you to do is make sure it fits in your budget, but make sure that you're paying your bills, make sure you're paying off your credit, right? Because those are important too. You don't want somebody coming after you for that, right? I mean, some might consider those to be mandatory bills are the debts that you've incurred. Now, if you're getting nervous about all of this budgeting, okay, don't feel overwhelmed, okay? Because there are people like me that can help you do this and not make you feel judged, not make you feel overwhelmed, help you through this. And you don't have to pay them to do that. Well, you shouldn't have to, right? If you give them the opportunity to help you budget your money, pay off your debts faster than you think you could, but also on top of that, be financially ready for when you actually do stop working, for when you actually retire, because guys, this is the only time while you're working to save up for that future you. Because if you've watched other videos of mine, you'll realize that if you stop working, that money is going to stop coming in. Some of you guys might be a little bit uh, delusional, I should say, about how much money you should be bringing in when you retire, thinking that you'll have the same type of income coming in, that you'll have the same lifestyle. I need to shake you right now because you will not have the same lifestyle as you did when you were working. And if you think you will, then I hope you're putting a lot of money into savings and paying off your debt. If not, you should be debt free by now. Okay. Anyways, I hope you got value from this video. You haven't, you, I hope you got value from this video. You can't unsee this video now. So like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel because if I can help you just tweak a little thing in your finances so that you feel a little bit more peace of mind, you feel a little bit less stress, and you actually start moving forward in your financial journey, then I've done my job. I got you all. Have a good day.